Um, so today I will present you uh, some experimental results that uh, uh, we uh, did in uh, Trondheim in summer 2012 already. And uh, as you see, um, um, I'm part of a big group uh, spread all around uh, Europe. Um, um, and I will talk about modulation instability and extreme waves in um, water of finite depth. So let me just give you some main motivation about our work. Um, so we would like to understand and uh, predict uh, extreme events occurring at the interface between uh, uh, air and water in ocean. Uh, like, for example, the, uh, the famous New Year's wave, which is a, a giant wave uh, recorded by the Dropner platform, that you see here, right? And uh, as you may see, I mean, among uh, waves which are basically, uh, let's say, five meters, which have five meter amplitudes, suddenly there is a, 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 an occurrence of a giant wave which is almost uh, uh, 20 meters from the drop to the crest. So it's, it's quite an extreme event. And, um, well, first we would like to understand and predict those, and then to be able to forecast these, uh, these events in, in ocean, um, because we would like to also understand the interaction uh, between uh, those rock waves with uh, ships and structures, and eventually avoid uh, some damages or losses. So, for example, this is the, the Lewis Majesty uh, ship, uh, the, which was itted in 2010, by a rock wave in the Mediterranean, and that uh, rock wave causes two losses. And uh, this is a case uh, one hit uh, the front of the ship. So let me give you some some very uh, qualitative uh, idea of uh, why extreme waves uh, form in uh, in ocean. So uh, there are essentially two uh, main mechanisms. Uh, the easier one are linear uh, are coming from linear theory and uh, uh, which tells you that um, in order to um, create a, a very high way you may use for example a simple linear superposition of uh, a sinusoidal wave uh, or salt wave appearing uh, at the interface uh, or you may also use uh, some kind of linear focusing due, due to the presence of currents in, uh, in ocean or change in the fluid depth, so change in, in, in the bathymetry. But um, uh, if, you, if, if you look at the uh, probability of occurrence of such a linear event, you will find out that um, um, uh, those, those, uh, this linear theory is not able to predict um, many, many events that are recorded in, in ocean or in uh, laboratory tests. So uh, one may uh, then go uh, to uh, some kind of nonlinear correction to the theory uh, in order to see if this nonlinear correction can, can predict higher events. And um, the main, um, uh, the, the main uh, mechanism uh, occurring uh, one, when one considers a nonlinear correction is the so-called modulation instability. Um, or sometimes called also Benjamin fear instability, uh, which is something related to the Benjamin fear index. And the other type of, of uh, mechanism could be the presence of two uh, crossing seas, uh, so nonlinear effect to the, due to crossing seas, or modulation instability may be also triggered by uh, varying currents or uh, by uh, wind blowing. So if you're interested in that, there are um, several books on that. And there is a recent review by Honorat et al. about those, those mechanisms. Uh, regarding books, there is a books by uh, Alfred Osborne or books by F.M. Pelinowski, for example. Um, so let me explain you uh, in an easy way the modulation instability. So modulation instability works when we are considering um, uh, a wave um, usually uh, going in well, we're just considering one, 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 one dimensional wave, and we're considering essentially a carrying wave, a carrying wave, which is lightly modulated. So, um, uh, if, you, if you look at the spectrum of this uh, wave, the spectrum has a, a peak around the carrier wave number, 
And then, as there is a modulation, this is uh, uh, causing uh, the presence of sidebands in the wave spectrum. So in this case, the carrier wave has two sidebands. And um, um, when we are in this condition, uh, basically, uh, knowing uh, the characteristics of the sideband, we, uh, we may have some kind of instability of this uh, modulation. And this instability may grow in, in time or in space, depending if we are measuring, um, let's say, the sea surface in time or uh, a, a time series in, in a particular point in space. And so for, for, for some particular par parameters, this instability may grow and may form very, very extreme events, so very high waves. Um, what is the mathematics behind that? Um, one uh, uh, can derive uh, 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 an equation for the, um, um, for the behavior of the envelope of the carrier wave. And this is uh, called the Schrodinger equation for the wave envelope. It's a partial differential equation for this uh, field psi, which is complex, but is related to, to, to the wave amplitude. And uh, this is an, a nonlinear differential equation, um, which has uh, this nonlinear term here and two linear term here. And those coefficients essentially depends on the wave dispersion relation. So they depend on the wave number of the carrier and on the depth of the fluid. And the, the nonlinear parameter depends also on the wave number, k, k naught, and on the depth of the fluid. So what turns out from the theory is that uh, by uh, changing the depth uh, and keeping, for example, constant the, 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 the wave, no, uh, wave uh, number of the carrier wave, um, those, those two terms in front of, of, the, of these two terms in the equation may change sign. So when the product of those two terms is uh, positive, then NLS is says to be focusing and modulation instability, so this, this type of instability may occur. And so one may have the formation of what, what are called rock waves. I must say that uh, NLS equation is an integrable equation, so in principle, mathematically, we know all the solution in time. And modulation instability is just like a starting process of a type of solution which is called breeders, which is plotted here. Um, but when one go to, to shallow water, uh, essentially, the coefficient in front of the nonlinear term uh, changes sign, and so NLS is now defocusing, and there, are, and there is no more modulation instability. <coughs> this, this study is valid in 1D, and in particular, the, there is a characteristic uh, a number, uh, which is essentially the product of the um, carrier wave uh, number and the depth, when this product is equal to 1.36, where the nonlinear term here vanishes. So it means that we are no more in focusing or defocusing uh, case, and we have to consider higher order nonlinearities. So um, this magic number tell, tells us essentially what, uh, the, the critical limit for, for having um, uh, this modulation instability mechanism. But all this theory uh, is, is valid in 1D. Uh, when one consider 2D, so for example, oblique, oblique perturbation, uh, one may prove theoretically that modulation instability may occur also in shallow water wave. How many time we have? Sorry. Five minutes? Uh, five. Okay, that's great. So this, this was the uh, aim of uh, our uh, experiment. We wanted to, to see if uh, all this uh, theory and all the numerical results that were already carried out uh, were uh, essentially true. So we went to Marintech, um, and we used the Marintech uh, large directional basin, which is a big basin, uh, 50 meters uh, wide and 70 meters long. And here on that side, the basin has uh, uh, wave makers, which may uh, produce uh, directional uh, waves. And we equipped the basin with some um, probes, so we are able to measure time series of the surface elevation. And at this side of the basin, there is a, there is a dish which is a, um, then capable to absorb waves. So we don't have um, wave um, coming back from this direction. And then we are testing a directional wave uh, such that uh, uh, essentially the sidebands are um, in a region of instability of uh, 
of the theory. And these are the um, frequency spectra that we recorded using our probes. So this is a, uh, uh, in upper case, you see the case where there are collinear perturbations, so essentially one, one dimensional perturbation, and down case is the oblique perturbation. So here we are in a regime where we expect modulation instability in both cases. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is the initial condition that we decided to generate uh, using our uh, wave makers. And uh, the, I used to I use an error to, to show you the carrier wave. So here we are uh, starting uh, our C surface with, with a carrier wave, which is slightly modulated by two sidebands. And uh, the process of uh, modulation instability can be seen in uh, the evolution of the wave spectrum by uh, a downshift of the energy of from, from the carrier wave to the sidebands. So as you see here, the modulation has to be takes place because the energy is transferred to this sideband from the carrier wave. And the same process happens also in the case of the oblique perturbations. So again, the energy in the, in the carrier is transferred to, to the sideband. And then we, we change, uh, so keeping fixed the bottom, we change wave number such that we were below this magic number. And we are testing again uh, some perturbation. So in the case of collinear perturbation, we were uh, um, able to see that uh, um, um, there were no mod modulation instability process. Thank you. Um, and so no energy was, tran was transferred to sideband. While in the case of ob oblique perturbation, we were recovering, uh, as we expected, some energy transfer to, to uh, lower sidebands. So we're proving uh, that. In, in the case of oblique perturbation, uh, rock waves may be generated also for uh, shallow water waves. So I don't have time to skip that. So we'll go directly to my conclusions. So um, we, are, we prove for, for the first time using um, experimental uh, facilities that uh, um, wave train is, is stable without oblique perturbation, as, as we expect in the theory for shallow water waves. But as soon as we um, consider also uh, oblique perturbation, then uh, uh, in shallow, also in shallow water uh, rock waves may, may happen. And uh, just a final remark, so as, as the basin was quite uh, small, so, so that uh, the, all the nonlinear process could not uh, take, uh, uh, take time to, to evolve, um, we also checked the validity of our result uh, using numerical simulation. Uh, starting from very, very small amplitude uh, sideband uh, perturbation, not, not like uh, our case in the experiment. And we basically find a good agreement uh, with, with the experiment result. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, we have five minutes for questions. Simone? Yes. Okay. So, um, well, first of all, let let me say that this this um, modulation instability is is already uh, operational in uh, in uh, in uh, forecast models for ocean waves. So, essentially. Uh, this this um, idea of modulation instability gives you an index, which is called Benjamin Fear Index, which tells you, which gives you a kind of um, probability of occurrence of rock waves. So, uh, in a, in a, in forecasting models, uh, which are operational, you can you can calculate that, and so you you may say to captains not to go in that region where the Benjamin Fear uh, Index is higher than a certain threshold. But of course, this is just uh, a statistical. Uh, prediction is, is not a deterministic prediction. Um, so as, as, as far as I know, uh, um, engineers started uh, just recently to, 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 to look at damages uh, uh, between uh, structures and ship and, and roadways. Because uh, before, I think that, as far as I know, but you 
you you probably can say more. Um, all the all the um, all the interaction was was uh, was uh, studied with with the um, superposition of of Stokes waves or sine waves, not 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 those type of nonlinear structures. So this 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 is an an experiment that we carried out in Berlin in 2013, I think, and we suggest to use those type of solutions, those breeders, to study uh, the the um, the interaction with with ships, for example. There's time for one more question. Yeah. Uh, okay, you, you can go beyond this uh, magic number 1.36, yes. but uh, do, did you study what is, do you have any limits for that with oblique interaction? So. Um, well, actually, um, it's uh, lower, but how much lower can it be? Um, well, we were not being able to really go go down so much because uh, we were limited by by the capability of, of the basin. Okay, so or or you you change the the bottom, so you move the bottom, or you or you change the wave number to to go down to to this magic number. And up to now, I think that that if if I remember well, this was the this value 1.24 was was the lowest one that we were able to achieve. Uh, yeah, but you did also some modeling. Do you have some theoretical predictions how how uh, low can so, it be? Okay, okay. So from the theory, what what you can you can predict is that uh, essentially, so this this uh, this uh, region uh, sh shadow here is the region of instability of the sidebands and. The more you you go down to the value of the number, the uh, narrower uh, those those regions of instability becomes. So it means that yeah, if if if, if you consider a, a very very small k, uh, k times h, uh, then you will you will need in order to create a rock wave, you will need to really disturb your system at a particular um, uh, choosing a particular sideband. Yeah. All other sidebands will be will be stable, and we have checked that uh, in uh, at at Marine Tech. Thank you. Okay, um, thanks again uh, for David. Thank you. I'd like to ask uh, Petr Denisenko to come forward and uh, prepare your presentation. Petr Denisenko carried out his research at the Grosse Welle Canal uh, in Hanover. And he will give a presentation about long waves climbing the slopes of different roughness.